I'm Debbie Birch and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Office of Tourism and we're here today to talk about an upcoming event. It's um, at Churchill Theater and they do productions throughout the year and the next one coming is The Miracle Worker and I have Mike, Mike Whitehill here with me if I can talk and he's <laughs> directing it so he's going to tell us a little bit about the play and some of the special things that are going on with this play mm -hmm. because, of, because of the nature of it. So hi Mike, welcome. <laughs> hi Debbie. So tell us a little bit about this. Um, it starts in September, correct? It starts on September 12th and runs through the 28th okay. of September. And uh, our, our uh, process behind this particular production was try to make it uh, a play more about uh, uh, Helen than Annie Sullivan. Ah, Instead of it okay. being more of a biography, uh, we wanted to make it much more from Helen's perspective. Uh, because she was uh, uh, deaf blind, uh, became deaf blind, uh, not congenitally, but at the age of 19 months, she had some consciousness of, uh, so of normalcy. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we're, uh, what we're trying to do here is a couple of things. We're revisiting the uh, uh, original stage directions that Gibson, William Gibson, the playwright, wanted to keep it a very simple, flexible, uh, sparse, uh, dramatic set instead of making it real. Uh, okay. And to create a plantation in Tuscumbia, Alabama that is not elegant in the in the way we did, for example, for the Little Foxes and fancier uh, fancier Southern plays, but to to make it as real as possible okay. with uh, with the characters as close to their original ages as possible, which was made this casting of this play a real yeah, challenge. Yeah, we were talking about mm -hmm. that. Um, and tell us how. Oh, the... we had uh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I had uh, thirteen uh, uh, young girls from the age of seven all the way up to about thirteen audition wow. for the play. They came from as far as Waldorf and. Uh, Burtonsville. Really? I have three three new members of the cast from Burtonsville. I actually cast in the show, uh, and the wow. uh, the process uh, uh, for finding the right Helen Keller uh, uh, largely depended on that sort of size age comparison, but also on their uh, natural way of going. And so uh, the auditions were, were several exercises that meant to bring out uh, how these uh, young girls actually. Uh, go about their normal lives mm -hmm. without direction, you know, and then see how they would look uh, without uh, without us doing a whole lot of, uh, of creative coaching. So it became, it became quite an exercise and, and fascinating to see all 13, any of the 13 could have become really? uh, Helen if it were not this building this family uh, in, in as uh, close to the original ages of right. the script as we could. Helen uh, Keller, like I say, uh, uh, became deaf uh, uh, and blind at the age of 19 months, and this tape takes place five years after that. So I really wanted to have a younger uh, Annie Sullivan in her early 20s and a, uh, 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 a Helen Keller that was as yep. close to seven. Right. Because the miracle becomes more miraculous when you see it at the hands right. of someone so young. I'm just amazed that you had that many, you know. I was kids I was totally shocked and uh, and gratified that they were all so competent. And that they uh, came competent. from far away like that too. Yeah, I mean that uh, part of it's social media, part of it's right. working with uh, you know working through uh, television, part of it is uh, is uh, word of mouth. Uh, you know, and of course we have our own theater camp at Churchill, so we had right. some candidates actually show up from there. A little bit older perhaps than what I was looking for, but very, very competent actors. So, so 13 beautiful actors what, to, to um, pick from. You, you were telling me about some of the things with the um, Lions mm -hmm. Club, that, yeah. you know, and, and about how they're involved with this. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. When, when the theater first decided to do this play, uh, because it had a, uh, uh, a, s a series of uh, uh, two significant disabilities involved in it, I got to thinking it would be uh, uh, very uh, appropriate to, to reach out to the local Lions Clubs because right. Helen Keller had uh, uh, read them the Riot Act in 1925 at Cedar Point, Ohio. Uh, and had called upon them to become the Knights of the Blind, which they, you obviously know they are. It's so much more involved with them than just seeing, you know, eyegla eyeglass collection right. baskets. Right, you go into I mean, the banks have, yeah, and everywhere. They, everywhere, everywhere they have the boxes. But for. it's been perpetuated since then, and it becomes part a significant part of their mission. And uh, and these guys that I've been in contact with so far in the Lions Club have been uh, very very excited and interested in working with us to hopefully get their uh, their families uh, and their, uh, their their members and potential new members to come and see the show and they uh, we're in the process now uh, of uh, reaching out with that to sell really out every show. night <laughs> I'll tell you it would be great because our first night's going to be a two for the price of one okay uh, uh, on the uh, 12th and then we're going to do uh, for that opening weekend which is kind of like the Lions Club weekend 
uh, we hope to be able to have, uh, we're going to have discounted rates for groups from each club oh, so that they could call in in advance and, and make reservations. And also, uh, St. Luke's Church has agreed to do a light summer fair picnic with hot dogs and pretzels for that first Sunday. Very nice. Which would lead into, the, uh, into that matinee. So hopefully, uh, you know, that was sort of a, a little bit of outreach to the clubs. Uh, we, we're all on the same boat. Uh, service clubs and the community theaters, uh, all pretty much any uh, 501c3 is in the same problem. You've got to raise funds somehow. Right. And yet, uh, you know, we want to be collaborative and, uh, and work uh, uh, collegially amongst all right. of those groups. And we've, I think we found a way here, for example, because this we're satisfying their mission. And I know that uh, that Helen was very important. Helen Keller was very important uh, to their right. to their mission from a very early. Uh, and early I just I, I know the Lions Club in glasses and never put it together no. thinking about there's you so know, much Helen more uh, scholar I, scholarships. I, uh, I yeah, never thought about now it. you know and uh, scholarships uh, with uh, uh, and and wonderful work with the Wilmer Eye Clinic. Uh, if mm -hmm. we if we can pull together what we're hoping to do on the second weekend, we're going to have an after show discussion with the cast and crew, and we're hoping that we know we're going to have professionals in the field okay. of uh, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing. But uh, we're also, uh, uh, the Lions Club uh, uh, here in Centerville had, had thought that maybe we could get some folks from the Wilmer Eye Clinic to oh, come wow. over as well and join in that discussion because treatment, uh, cochlear implants and treatments for deafness, for example, uh, have, have advanced so far that some of the older uh, you know, methods of communication mm -hmm. and training may, may become uh, uh, more arcane and less, uh, less uh, parlance than it is well, today. Well, and you were telling me you're going to have somebody signing. Yes, on the second weekend. On the we're second kind of, kind of a, a really much more accessible accessibility weekend. Uh, we're having sign language interpreters from right. Community College of, uh, of Baltimore County come over to do uh, the three shows, all three shows wow. of the middle weekend, which is September 19th, 20th, and the 21st, and that matinee on the 21st. And the advantage of having that and then having the colloquy uh, after that uh, is that, uh, which would be signed as well. Right. So we're trying to bring in as many people from the, uh, from the uh, deafblind community as we can, and their, uh, their caregivers and their, their parents, because ironically, uh, the play is very good, having been written in 1956 and then uh, first performed in 1959, long before the movies. The, uh, uh, the, the uh, um, issues that the parents suffer, the, the grief and the, and, the, and the horror that parents discover when they find right. a, a child uh, has these disabilities is, is, so, um, is so devastating that it often infects the way that parents behave toward their kids right. when they're in current rehabilitation programs. Right. Uh, so uh, the parents uh, can be either the greatest, uh, the greatest asset or, in the, some cases, the, 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 uh, the biggest hurdle I in, in getting certain times of yeah, yeah, hidden yeah. to, uh, to uh, some types of recovery with working with professionals. Right. So the play does this so beautifully uh, that, uh, that we are being very careful not to create stereotypes in the, uh, with the actors, either in the, uh, in the blind, uh, deaf blind uh, side of it or in the parent side of it, so that, so that the audience will be able to see uh, um, and, and feel from Helen Keller's right. point of view, you know, kind of what she was going through when she was able to make that uh, connection, the first rational connection between objects and language. And I think that, that water. is really, as water. It was, it was water. And water appears, you know, water appears th throughout the play mm -hmm. uh, in, in varying degrees. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting. Um, we also want to be, uh, in, in order to perpetuate that, some of our scenes, for example, will open in mime and in pantomime, oh, okay. uh, so you won't hear, you'll see, you barely be able to see them, but you won't hear them talking. You won't hear glasses and silverware at the dining right. room table. And then that will sort of evolve, uh, you know, into a normal discussion after going through this very muffled uh, medium frequency voice transition. Oh, that's uh, because you get, sometimes there's residual hearing that you can act, that, right. that the deaf have. I uh, can't interpret, but, uh, but can actually, uh, can actually uh, penetrate. So, we have a lot of uh, special effects that, are, that are, are, are meant to bring it as real as possible. Another point, we have two members of our, of our, um, of our technical team that work within the deafblind community. Oh, So okay. we actually have on, in my staff two, uh, two professionals. They're, they're language interpreters, but they can't work the show because they're actually in the show or, or right. working during the show. But, they, uh, but they're also helping me 
uh, ensure that we don't create uh, caricatures or right. uh, or uh, stereotypes there, there, in the behavior. Bring some reality to absolutely, it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And this would be true in nineteen in in eighteen eighty when this play takes right. place at just as much as it is today. Exactly. And there's and these uh, and these methods of communication, if they're not oral or vocal or verbal. Uh, are still communicating, and, and I find this to be true in the autism spectrum. Throughout, it's a different way of talking. We just can't make that connection. It's going on. There's right. this massive brilliance uh, in Helen Keller, uh, an incredible underlying intelligence that that needs to get out. And the frustration of it not getting right. out uh, is is what it today is called acting out. Right. You know, and, and what it really is is a inward reach of the means of communication at your hands. Whatever whatever tool you can get your hands yep. on is what you use. And if the parents and the, and the observers choose to look at it as misbehavior, that's fine. Right. Uh, it's not. It's communication. And what we want you to see is that communication uh, forming itself into uh, f this sort of logical connection to language, to, right. to signed finger signed um, uh, words Where that she comes she to understand. And once she's learned it, uh, Helen goes on to learn an incredible vocabulary. Uh, she was a wonderful suffragette, uh, a, a pretty strong socialist for her day, which is different from the way we kind of are, have right. vilified socialism uh, in our current uh, society. But her, her uh, uh, ag aggressive um, um, efforts to found the American uh, Federation for the Blind and other, and other uh, things to help people, uh, sighted people and, right. and, and hearing people understand, uh, you know, how important it is to, to liberate them with language. Uh, right. and, and that is what this play does uh, beautifully. And I think if we're able to show even a tenth of the, uh, of the uh, effort and the heroism of Helen Keller uh, in our production. It's going to be I'm incredible. a happy man. Yeah, right. it's being incredible. <laughs> Nobody's going to walk away from that right. uh, without being uplifted. Uh, right. I can I can guarantee you, it is one of the most um, um, you know, when you when you when you see courage acted out in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's different than reading about it. Right. And I think that that uh, is a visceral experience that I know uh, uh, we have a unique opportunity to present, which is why we wanted to bring the interpreters along as well. Not that the deaf can't read the play for themselves, but that they would be able to actually see, see it, it and and uh, right. and hear it as it's uh, as it's being unfolded in front of them, right. and it becomes a much more uh, uh, meaningful experience. I think. Well, I think it's it's a favorite movie, and I've never read the play, but mm -hmm. you know you've got my interest on <laughs> it. And Good. I just think it's wonderful all the components that you have pulled together to put this on all the extra stuff, having the signers there, mm -hmm. involving the Lions Club and everything. And mm -hmm. tell us the dates again. Yes. One more time. The the show opens on the twelfth of September and runs through the twenty eighth. As usual for Churchill, we have uh, our Friday and Saturday nights are at eight o'clock, and our matinees are at two o'clock on Sundays. Okay. We have a Sunday matinee in in all in each of the three Sundays. Um, you can make reservations or you can buy online at churchilltheater.org. Uh, that's www.churchilltheater.org, all one word. Uh, or, or call for reservations for special groups uh, to 410-758-1331. If you'll call the theater, for example, if you have a group uh, community provider or uh, if you're in blind industries or if you have other mm -hmm. uh, you know, groups that, uh, 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 de in the, in the deafblind community that would be interested in coming to the show, uh, we can uh, uh, set up group rates for those in Wonderful. advance. Yeah, so for example, the uh, uh, we're going to have a separate uh, uh, community group rate, for the, obviously, for the Lions Club. But for uh, uh, discussions and, and folks that are working in the deafblind community, we'll have special group rates for them as well. So, But you have to call those in in right, advance, in and advance. then we reserve by name and number, and that way we'll know that we can set aside a certain right. number of seats. And obviously, we have uh, reserved seating. Uh, for those requiring the sign language uh, interpreter, so that uh, so that they, you know, that would be mm -hmm. one of the few times we actually don't have stadium seating for right, you know right. rock concert style seating. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So really looking forward to it. And then of course, like I say, we're going to have a colloquy or a discussion on September 21st af after the show, okay. uh, which should be very interesting because our actors are going through. Uh, are are uncovering each of the parents and uh, and the aunts' uh, stages of, of of grief in this, and they all know they never occur at the same time. So each actor is is, is some are farther along in the process right. uh, as, as the characters in the play are. 
uh, and uh, and some evolve, you know, during the course of the play. So uh, it's instructive to the parents to realize that you know that it can be seen that you're not through the, going through this alone. And there are tons of people out there willing and able right. to help. Yeah, and uh, and so often you just don't take advantage of those. You don't even think to take advantage. Exactly. Of them well, it sounds like it's going to be a wonderful production, and we're excited to have you back here. And what is your next show coming after this one? We have Visiting Sam, a nifty original play by uh, local uh, playwright Earl Lewin, who uh, most of your audience probably has heard of. Uh, that uh, is a premiere. It's the first time it's been done, uh, okay. this original piece. It opens on August 1st and runs through the 10th. Now, in that particular case, the tickets are uh, available. You have to call online to make your reservations, but you pay at the box office okay. instead of online because we don't have a we're not. It's not a. It's a book in. It's not one of our regular right. annual productions, and uh, and that'd be paid for by cash or check. In other words, okay. we don't run that through our credit card system. And then, of course, after the Miracle Worker, we have Blood Brothers, which is a musical uh, and and book by Willie Russell, directed by Sheila Grasso, uh, who's a very familiar uh, uh, character in the area. And that opens November seventh and runs. And I'm going to invite you back. Or I'm going to right now say I'd like to have you come back and talk about that when sure. you know once the Miracle Worker's over, so we can get the information out about that one. Be happy to join you. And this is such a such an interesting and powerful piece that is, uh, as many people can get to see it, uh, uh, I think it will, you know, enrich our communities, but also make our understanding of, of disabilities a little more, uh, a little more real for some folks. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about this, and I hope you sell out every night. <laughs> I, I do too. Thank you very much, Debbie. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs>